Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Becca Ager France, one of the interim pastors at Grace Lutheran Church, and we're glad that you're here to worship with us with this service of the word. Let's begin together with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. <laughs> Make darkness 
run and hide We know we were made for so much more than ordinary lives It's time for us to more than just survive We were made to thrive with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first lesson for today comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times, and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which our ancestors ate and they died but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. As we near the end of our series of texts centered around bread, we begin to make a shift from literal bread to figurative bread. Many theological commentators claim this passage from John, where Jesus has told his followers to eat his body and drink his blood, as a key text referring to Holy Communion. However, our friend Martin Luther does not agree. He states, this text cannot be applied to the sacrament. He goes on to explain that those whom Jesus was speaking to were already preoccupied with eating and drinking. Luther's claim is that Jesus wanted his followers to figure out what he meant for themselves. When I first wrote this sermon, my next statement was going to be, 
This is one of those times where Luther and I do not agree. I have always read this passage from John as part of his communion story. But I have learned this week that sermon writing is a funny thing. I am very new to this, so I started my sermon prep and writing in early August. In case you are wondering, that's pretty early. I learned this week you can have a whole sermon written, have trusted friends and colleagues read it and give you feedback, edit and practice it over and over and over, and feel confident your sermon is done. And then you can read something or hear something, and suddenly you're sitting back down to edit your sermon and go in a different direction. It has always felt safe and comfortable to hear these words from John as his communion story because it makes sense. Jesus is literally telling his disciples to eat his body and drink his blood. We know these elements to be bread and wine of Holy Communion. And this very well could be part of John's communion story, but we're only in chapter 6, and we're not even at the end of the chapter, so we know that there's more. Something I heard this week got me thinking. What if John's communion story is the foot washing? We hear the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet in every gospel except Mark. However, unlike in Matthew and Luke, in John, following the story of the foot washing, there is not the story of the Last Supper. John may have been up to something very intentional here. One reason this passage has been disputed as a communion text is the cannibalistic reference to eating Jesus' body and drinking his blood. A statement which we will hear next week caused many of Jesus' followers to no longer follow him. Would Jesus truly suggest that in order to have eternal life, one must partake in a practice that is in such opposition to their beliefs? This idea of eating and drinking the body and blood of Jesus in literal terms had drastic ramifications. However, when we look at it figuratively, the body and blood of Christ as a more collective relationship with Christ that brings us eternal life Language that viewed as an insider of his day was heard as welcoming and accepting, then this passage does unite us as followers of Christ around the table. We know that Jesus had a way of repeating himself, often to great length to emphasize a point. He reminds me of my mom when my brother and I would get in trouble for something as children. She would make us write sentences, what felt like a hundred times, the same words over and over. I will not fill in the blank. I hated doing it. My hand would cramp, but the lesson stuck. And I still think about it to this day. So from my parents' perspective, it worked as a punishment. Maybe Jesus was on to something with his repetitive answers to the disciples. For weeks, we have heard Jesus talk about bread, possibly to prepare us and his followers to be ready to hear the words this week. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Whoever eats me will live because of me. But what if the story doesn't end with receiving the body and blood of Christ? What if, it, what if the emphasis John places on the foot washing later in his gospel was meant to tell us something? Jesus got down on his knees and he served his disciples. He washed their feet. What if receiving the meal is not the end? What if this meal is our invitation to go out into the world, to take care of the poor, to fight for justice, to fix systems that are broken, and to create space where all are truly welcomed and loved? What if receiving the body and blood of Christ is an invitation from God to give thanks to God and build up God's kingdom? In our reading from Ephesians, Paul tells us, Paul uses what we call apocalyptic language. We hear the word apocalypse often, referring to end times and associated with fear. However, what apocalypse means is forecasting the ultimate destiny of the world. Paul's words create this imagery of old and new, a cry to make the most of the time. 
Paul is emphasizing the importance of building up the body before Christ's return, a time they thought was very near. Paul wanted to build up the kingdom of God. Paul ends saying, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. These 20 words ask us, as imperfect people, to do something incredibly difficult. When things are good and going our way, it is easy to give thanks to God. I just returned home a few weeks ago from a retreat with our tech youth, and it was good. I think back to our week together in Davis and how thankful we were to be together, laughing, eating, making memories, and reconnecting after more than a year and a half without any trips or retreats together. I could stand here for hours and share stories from our time together because it was so good, and it is easy to give thanks to God for our time in Davis. However, when I do the harder work, and I think back to the agonizing Zoom call where Pastor Melissa and I shared with our group that we would not be going to the Osage Nation Reservation in Oklahoma, I was not thankful. I was angry with God because this virus we knew so little about had ruined a trip we worked so hard to make happen. A trip our students and adult leaders were so excited about. A trip that may not happen for many years because of the ways in which this virus has impacted the people on reservations around our country. And for their safety, we cannot enter their sacred land and be together. Paul tells us we are to be thankful for all things. And if I had the radical openness to God's work in my life, I may have seen God's protective guidance at work then. But I am an imperfect human, and I was blind to the bigger work. I was simply angry. Cancel trips, navigating a virtual world, trying to stay connected, and learning together how to care for one another as we all experience the same pandemic in different ways. The last year and a half has been hard. I was sad for our young people who were losing out on so much. I was hurting as I longed for and deeply needed these opportunities to be together. There were many times I could not thank God, but I was thankful for God. I think that is what Paul wanted the Ephesians to hear, that God is with us and we can be thankful for God, even when we cannot give thanks to God. We may not have the strength to thank God in our dark, painful, and angry moments, but when we know that God is with us in those moments, we can be thankful for God. It is the assurance that God is with us that Pastor Melissa and I find the strength to make difficult decisions over and over throughout this ongoing pandemic. And it was high up in the mountains of West Virginia as we gathered together each night for a meal, that I looked into the faces of our young people and I thanked God that we were all together, healthy and whole. Just as Jesus gathered with his friends, his disciples, his followers and said, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. And later in John, Jesus gets down on his knees and he washes the feet of his disciples. And just as Jesus commands us to love one another and calls us to serve our neighbor, to care for the poor and needy, to feed the hungry, and to go out into the world to make disciples, Jesus gathers us at the table. Jesus gathers us at the table to be fed and nourished so that we can go out into the world to be the hands and feet of Christ. Jesus gathers us at the table so that we can be forgiven and made whole, a gift that Christ commands us to tell others so that we can build up the body of Christ. At the table, we can give thanks to God, even for the things we are not sure why we are thankful because God has welcomed us to this meal, a meal where we receive God's eternal kingdom, 
a kingdom that is not meant for us alone. At the table, our work does not end. It is only just the beginning. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained in the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. God of wisdom, enlighten your church, guide theologians, biblical scholars, authors, and seminary professors as they seek greater knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, mend the earth. Cool warming oceans and preserve melting ice caps. Increase our awareness of changing climate patterns and reveal new approaches to the ecological challenges we face. Shield those in the path of hurricanes or tropical storms. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work of reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or mired in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help all who are grieving and all those who suffer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of beauty, inspire artists. Bless those whose visual and musical gifts enliven the assemblies. Bless the creative work of poets, hymn writers, composers, painters, sculptors, and all others that enrich our worship and daily life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are thankful to all for all gifts of generosity, tithes, and all of those acts of generosity that go into our extended offerings. We invite you to continue that faithful giving through online means, through sending gifts in through the mail, and now let us pray in thanksgiving to God for those offerings. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.